There are two options to record vocals in GarageBand. You can record voice only or you can record vocals with an existing backing track. What you will do first is you're going to open your GarageBand. You might have a pre-existing project and what you will do next is just go to File and click New and now this screen appears. When you're recording vocals only, you might be recording your audio for a podcast, maybe a narration for a YouTube video, or you want to record a cappella singing. If that is the case for a cappella singing, you might want to set the tempo of your project, the key signature and the time signature. And then if you are recording for podcast and narration only, you don't really have to set this up. The next thing you're going to go is click choose. And now in the audio section, you're going to choose the icon with the microphone and click create. If you're recording a vocal with a backing track, you might actually already have a GarageBand file given to you with the backing track. So what you will do is you're going to go ahead, find it on your computer and open it. You will know that it's a GarageBand file because it will end maybe with saying .band or if you go to the kind of the file, you will see that it says GarageBand project. To open it, just double click on it. and automatically your GarageBand project will open. Now you will notice that there's no space for you to record your vocals yet. So what you will do is gonna click the plus button to add a new track, choose audio, recording using a microphone or line input and click create. And now you will notice that this audio one track appeared here to just see this a little bit nicer. Maybe I'm gonna move it further down so I always have my vocals down here on the bottom. The great thing about having this GarageBand file given to you already is that your tempo, your key and your time signature are already preset for you. Of course, if you want to change those while you're recording, you can easily do that. You might also have a backing track given to you as a MIDI file and you will know that it's a MIDI file because if you look again, you will see that it has dot mid ending or also if you look at the kind of the file, it's going to say, say standard MIDI file. To record your vocals into a standard MIDI file, you're going to open your GarageBand. Again, this popped up, so I'm just going to click new project, start an empty project. In this case, you don't have to worry about setting the tempo or anything. You will see very quickly why and just click choose. Again, audio, record using a microphone and click create. Now the next step will be for you to find your MIDI file on your computer. So you can go to your finder or press command and space to find this file on your computer. And what I'm going to do once I'm finding the computer, I'm just going to click on this file and I'm going to drag it into my garage band. Now notice that when I do that, it changes the playhead location changes and if I drop it here number five my MIDI file is going to start from there but I don't want to do that I want to start straight from measure number one so I'm going to just drop it right here now GarageBand asks you if you also want to import the tempo information definitely click yes import tempo because that's going to help you set your tempo the key and the key signature already so you will not need to worry about that. Notice that now your audio track is going to be on the top here. You can rename it and say vocals just for an easier reference. Before you start recording you will want to check the input device that you're using to record your vocals. To do that you can go click on GarageBand and click preferences or you can click command and comma choose audio MIDI and then you make sure that you select the correct device maybe you want your input device to be an external microphone maybe you want that to be your computer and then make sure that also when you're listening the recording you choose the correct output as well maybe that's your MacBook speakers maybe you're using headphones to listen to that. 
Another important thing for you to know is that if you are recording your vocal track with the backing track given to you already, you will want to use the headphones to listen to the backing track so that the backing track is not heard in your recording. When you're recording vocals, it really helps to have the count in and metronome enabled so that you can always hear the beat while you're recording. If you don't have a backing track and you're recording your singing only, you can easily find the pitch by clicking on the tuning fork or the tuner right here and find your starting pitch. When you're recording your vocals, it's really important to find a good recording space. A quiet environment is really important. Remember that all the sounds from the environment, from your surroundings, are picked up with your microphone and those will reflect in your recordings. For best recording, find a small room that, that doesn't have a lot of echo. Maybe you go in your closet, but definitely don't record in a bathroom or somewhere where there's a lot of echo for the best quality of your recording. Now that you have checked out your input device, you have a good recording space, you're gonna start recording. First, I recommend that you record a short section so that you can listen to it and then adjust recording levels as needed. To start recording, press the red circle button in your workspace or the R key on your keyboard. To stop recording, press the square in the workspace or the space bar on your keyboard. Now that you have recorded it, listen to your recording and adjust the recording levels as needed. That might mean that you adjust again on your microphone or directly in GarageBand in the smart controls right here on the bottom. If you don't see the smart controls open, go ahead and just click the smart control button and you will see that the recording settings record a level. You will then adjust the level as much as needed. A good voice recording looks like something like this. You will notice that the sound waves are getting bigger and bigger, but they never reach over the top or over the bottom. Maybe I would want to adjust the volume level a little bit more to record and maybe I'm just going to go ahead and do that right here. I'm just going to raise it just a little bit and record once again and check the sound wave. Ah! The sound wave looks like this. You'll notice again that it has peaked right here, but it didn't ever reach over it. Here's an example of a really bad voice recording. In this case, the sound wave reaches over the top and the bottom of the track constantly. So that's going to sound really, really bad. Here's another really bad example. In this case, the sound wave always remains really, really small, which means that your vocals are going to remain very quiet. In short, the recording level when you start recording is probably best to be somewhere around the middle and then you adjust it either higher or lower as much as needed. You will also notice that there's an automatic level control, which can be useful sometimes for narrations since your voice is generally within a very, very similar dynamic range. But if you're recording the singing, I don't recommend using this automatic level control. Now that you're done setting the recording level, go ahead and start recording your vocals. You can record your vocals all at once or record them in shorter chunks. If you're recording for narration, or recording for a podcast, it's best to just record all vocals all at once and you edit them later. But if you're recording your singing, it might be better to record in smaller chunks. If you're recording all at once, go ahead, press record button and just let the recording going until you are done. Your first option when recording shorter chunks is to record until you make your first mistake. When you've done your first mistake, go ahead and move the playhead to the spot where you made a mistake and start recording from that spot again. Your second option is to record the vocals using the cycle. This is very useful when recording singing vocals for a song project, or maybe you're recording your audition. This is usually better than re-recording from a certain section because all the previous recordings that you have recorded are saved and you get to choose the one that you want to keep. To start with this process, you will set the cycle area of, to the part of the song that you want to record first. To do that, go ahead and click the cycle button. And you will see that this yellow line appears on the top. Let's say I only want to record measures one through three. So I'm going to set the cycle area to that section and then start recording. I've listened to this section, but I didn't quite like it. So I'm going to re-record it once again. 
I play this recording again and if I'm happy with it, I'm going to move on. And to do that, I'm going to just click on the cycle area and move it further along in the song. Maybe I want to re-record two measures again. Maybe I want to be recording four measures, for example. You will notice when I recorded twice, a small number appeared on the top left corner of my track. When I click on it, I can actually choose which recording I would like to listen to. Maybe the first one or the second one. I can listen to both. Maybe that's 50 different takes. I can listen to all of them. And then whichever number you see right here, and it's take two, that's the number of the recording that I'm going to leave here. I do the same thing for all the other sections of the songs. And when I'm finished, I can easily delete the unwanted and unused takes. So I just click on this number and click delete unused takes. The last thing that you can do with the vocals is change the voice effect. To do that, you are gonna make sure that your track is highlighted and you go into your sound library on the left side of the workspace. If it's not open for you, click the sound library button, click voice, and then you will notice that there's all sorts of different effects. So you can just click on them and continue and you will notice that when you listen to it the sound of your vocal might change there might be a little bit more echo a little bit more a different timber so choose the one that you think works best for you keep in mind that if you are recording your voice for an audition you do not want to use any voice effects the judges want to hear your most natural unedited voice and any editing will probably affect your audition score <laughs> All right, you're all done recording, so now you have two options. The first one is to save this project as a GarageBand file. To do that, you can go to File and click Save As, or just press Command and S to save on your computer. And you can just do Singing. Another option is to export this project into an MP3 file, for example. To do that, you're gonna go and click Share in your menu bar, and click export song to disk. MP3 is the most common type of file and can be open on any device as an audio file, so it's best to do it, unless you need a high quality uncompressed file. For that, you can use either IFF or WAV format, you name your project, and click export. If you want to export only a short section of your song as an MP3 file, you can go ahead again and click the cycle button or C on your keyboard and mark the section that you want to export. Go ahead into menu bar, click share, export song to disk. You will notice that on the bottom right here, it says export cycle area. Make sure that you check that and click export. And now only the area that I marked with the cycle is going to be exported. And this is how we record the vocals in GarageBand. If you want to learn more, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.